السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد Always we begin with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send our greetings and prayers of peace upon the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We testify with firmness and conviction that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshipping slave and final messenger. Alhamdulillah, one of the great blessings uh, for the Muslim ummah is this day of Jumu'ah. It is the day of reminding one another of our sanctity before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a day of gathering and celebration in the heavens and in the earth, in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you see the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was someone who was, although he was eloquent in his speech, he would could confine himself on the day of Jumu'ah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the speech that reminded the heart of their dealings with Allah Azza wa Jal. And when you look into the life of the Prophet ﷺ, you would see that the purpose of the prayer of Jumu'ah and its khutbah is to provide information for people, not in terms of scholastic achievements and, and, and you know, famous uh, statements of knowledge, but to touch the hearts of people to make them better individuals. And the purpose of the Jumu'ah prayer is that a person reconnect with Allah. And part of the requirements of the Jumu'ah prayer, according to the Imams of Ahl Sunnah, and particularly Imam al Shafi'i, he makes it as one of the usul, one of the pillars that the Khutbah al Jumu'ah is built upon, is to remind people of Taqwa Allah, to remind them of their piety and consciousness and their dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the Prophet ﷺ would speak to the Ummah, he would speak to them, Ka'annahu Mundiru Jaysh. It's as if he was taking command of an army. It's as if he was warning them of an enemy that was soon to attack them. And the Prophet Wasallam's warnings about the day of Jumu'ah and in the khutbah of Jumu'ah always consistent on a message that was built from the Qur'an. And in that same spirit, inshaAllah, we want to talk about one of the basic elements that we as Muslims adhere to as a part of our faith. And something that, subhanAllah, we don't talk about often. Al-insan... A human being, the word insan, it's translated to human being, but it comes from the same root to mean forgetful. Al insan yansa, he forgets his relationship with Allah. And when you look at surahs in the Quran, like for example, Surah Taha, the basic message of Surah Taha is that in it, Al insan yansa, and Allah speaks to Adam alayhi salam and says, وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَنَسِي we made a promise with Adam and he forgot. And us as being the children of Adam, we forget our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to talk about who we are as human beings. Anta, you and I are three parts. You are three parts. Anta ruh, you are a soul, a nafs. Wa anta aql, and you are rationale and intellect, a mind that thinks. وَأَنْتَ بَدًا And you are a physical body. These three things, when combined together, make you who you are. And separate you from all of the other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will find animals, animals, who have bodies and physical beings, genetically 99% the same as you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor us. If you or I, may Allah protect us and honor us, were to have a defect in your heart, and you went to a cardiac surgeon and you said, I have a hole in my heart, my heart, my artery, it's clogged up. I need you to take a valve from an animal or someone or something, fix me up. The first animal he turns to is an animal that we are forbidden in the Quran to eat, al-khinzir, the swine. The first heart surgery, heart transplants, they would take the heart of a living pig and put it in a human being and that heart matches the size, the diameter, the number of beats, the genetic DNA, the code of you is 99% that. 
physically. You cannot tell the difference unless you were to do genetic testing on the tissue of that animal. That's how you separate al khinzir the swine, from that of a human body. You sitting in front of me, I standing in front of you, and made of just a little bit over 70% water. Most of me is H2O. That water you drink, the rain that has descended, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you in the Quran, and they just discover this, خَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ مِنْ مَا He created everything from water, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam alayhi salam was called Adam لِأَنَّهُ مِنْ أَدِيمَ الْأَرْضِ Adam is from the depths of the earth. أديم الأرض. You and I are carbon. You and I are organic material. You and I are carbon and silicon. We're hydrogen, we're helium. That's your badan. And the badan is the least important of what makes you who you are. Second is rationale. You think. Monkeys think. Dolphins think. But they're not rational in their thought. They're not able to choose right or wrong from consequences. Unless they are trained and developed in it. But you and I as a part of our instinct, my young child, as soon as he feels the heat of the fire from a distance, he knows this is something I must stay away from. He knows right and wrong, good or bad. He knows if he's taken something to look at me, should I not touch this or not? He begins to think about the greater impact he has in the world. And animals do not have this higher intellect or this second order or tiered order rationale. That is only found in us as human beings. The only creation of Allah that can think outside itself and outside its place and time are human beings. And that rationale is least important. What makes you who you are, Yabni Adam, is your ruh. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyib, rahimahullah, he talks about the marvelousness of the soul. Because the moment my soul leaves my body, my mind switches off and my body drops. There's nothing left. Anta ruh. You are a soul. A sacred soul that is part of the creation of Allah. That is from the spirit that Allah blew into Adam. That spirit that Allah put into humanity was not put into other things. And therefore you and I, when an insect and an animal die, we know with 100% certainty that on the day of judgment, they are not asked about how they live their life. They are not asked about they're good and bad, the right and wrong. They are not accountable. And Allah tells us, in aradna al-amana. We put upon mankind this test that is a trust upon them, upon their shoulders. The mountains and the moon and the sun, they all follow the command of Allah out of tawwa'an aw karha, because they are obligated. But you and I have been given a soul that chooses. You choose how you live your life. Some people mistake the concept of free, of free will. They say, Brother Yahya, we heard the Prophet Wasallam tell us that there are people who are created for Jannah and there are people who are created for Jahannam. If Allah knows who's in Jannah and Allah knows who's in Jahannam, why should I do anything? And the Prophet answered this question very simply. He said, You will only do what's written for you. If you don't do, if you sit down, that's what's written for you. And if you get up and you choose to worship Allah, then Allah chose you. The choice is with you and the knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to Allah's qadr upon us, there are three things that you need to comprehend, my dear brothers and sisters. There are things that happen in you. You have no control over it. If you were to try to say to your brain, stop breathing, Heart, stop beating. Lungs, stop inhaling and exhaling. You fail. You can't. It's impossible. You have no control over your bodily functions that are internal within you that even science today fails to understand how it occurs. Today, research is showing 
that even before you intend to grab something or even before you feel hunger and want to feel it, there's something that triggers it. They don't know what. You think about thinking before you think. Subhanallah. What is this thing that thinks about thinking? And the answer is with us, ar-ruh. Things that happen in you, you have no control. This is beyond your control. This is qadr, faith. Allah will not ask you about it. Second, there are things that happen to you. You can't control it. You're at a red light. You're doing everything you should do by the laws of the land. You're not speeding. You're not, you're not in an in unsecure car. Your seatbelt's on. You're not on the phone. Someone hits you from the back. It happens to you. Qadr. If the whole world came to stop it, they can't. And if the whole world came to prevent it, they can't. It's written for you. Those two elements, you have no will. And therefore Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهِ Your will cannot contradict what Allah wants for you. You cannot will for yourself, I do not want cancer, Allah take it from me. It's not in your hands. It happens in you. It happens to you. It is written before your creation. The third element is what you do with what happens in you and to you, how you respond. What decisions do you make? Your heart is beating and you're alive. You're able to move and talk and act and go and come and work and earn. What do you do with what you have been blessed with? What decisions do you make in your life? That is in your hand. It is part of Allah's knowledge. It's part of Allah's kitabah. It's part of Allah's ilm. والكتابة والمشيئة والقدر والخلق But it is given to you to make a choice إن هديناه السبيل Every one of us, Allah puts us on a road in life إما شاكرا وإما كفورا Some will thankful, thankfulness to Allah Others will be كفورا Ungrateful to Allah, the beginning of kuf How you respond in life is a part of the choices and the decisions you make in life. And in that is the secret of your salvation. In that is the need of your ruh. We began by saying there are three elements to you. Anta nafs, ruh, you are a nafs, and a ruh, the word nafs means the soul in your body. Tatanafas, you breathe with it. Once your soul leaves your body and before it enters, it's ruh. It's just a spirit, not with you. And nafs wa ruh is the same. And ta'aqf, you are intellect and rational. You know right and wrong, good and bad. You can make choices. And third, you are badan, a body, which is the maheen, the simplest of the creation of Allah that makes you up as a human being. My topic with you today, my dear brothers and sisters, is therefore about the most important part of your body, which is your nafs. And you... O son of Adam, this soul that is within you is the least nurtured. And it's the one you forget about the most. The body is the one you care about the most because you don't see the world properly. So when you get sick, you run to the doctor. But when your heart, your spirit, your ruh is sick, you forget it and you sleep. And it should be the opposite. Your mind and the mind of your children, you want to sharpen it. Study, learn, gain knowledge, go to school, sharpen your intellect. But your son and your daughter who you raise, you forget to raise their spirit. You forget to give them the akhlaq of Islam, the izzah of Islam. You forget to nurture their soul. 